Suhag Jewelers, timeless jewelry for generations. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show, Fight Against COVID-19. I'm your host, Dr. Shafali Agrawal, and welcome to another episode. Thank you, everyone, for liking our show and helping us connect to many people who are working behind the scene. They're people who are actually making masks, feeding the hungry, trying to provide food to the healthcare workers or supporting the frontline healthcare workers. But there are many more things that need help in today's world. And today we have a very interesting story, very, very interesting from Boston. I'm very excited to bring Angela and Tyler Spence today from Boston to tell something what they are doing very unique for fighting against COVID-19. Welcome, Angela and Tyler Spence from Boston. Hello. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you for actually being on the show, and we are very excited to talk about something very unique that you guys are doing. So before we start about what you're doing, tell me a little bit about yourself and your family. Uh, sure thing. I'll, I'll kick things off. Uh, my name is Tyler Spence. Um, my background is you know, data privacy, compliance, risk management uh, in the technology space. Um, we have three children, uh, wow. ages 10, 4, and 2. And I'm Angela, and I work in diversity and inclusion for large corporations, um, Fortune 500 size organizations. Um, and again, we live in Boston, Massachusetts. That's amazing. Such a cute family. To, wow, three kids. <laughs> you, might them. you might see yes. them. Yes. <laughs> we would love to, because the topic is about them, so we would love to have them. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing, and especially in this fight and what's going on with COVID-19. Uh, so basically, with um, since COVID-19, we've been actively engaged in a lot of different organizations. We've been on the show previously um, for Feed the Fight Boston, something that we're very active in. Um, but as COVID-19 was, you know, kind of dra was dragging on and, and our governor of Massachusetts making announcements on the impact on daycare, we really started to have conversations at our dinner table on, on what does the future of our loved um, local daycare really look like? Um, and how do we ensure that daycares are supported throughout COVID-19? Yeah, please um, bring him in. No problem. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> right. That's fine. <laughs> sorry, we have... Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> and so basically, we have a really lovely daycare in our town that's been there for 22 years. It's very small. It's very diverse. Um, and we wanted to ensure as we were having conversations with our director and as our kids were sitting on their daily Zoom calls at four years old, we wanted to ensure that this stayed as part of our community. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one thing to maybe underscore um, some of Angela's points is just that, you know, I, I mean, a restaurant closing and, and or a hotel or something like yeah. that is, is detrimental for our community. Um, something like the daycare industry, which we believe is getting less hype, uh, has extremely uh, strong downstream impacts, right? Being um, part of a family who we act both actively obviously want to work uh, and be productive members of our community, um, not having anyone to watch our children uh, and, and given the economic constraints on that industry, specifically not being able to provide services right now, it, it undermines that ability for us to go back into the workforce. So, you know, as offices are opening, as restaurants are opening, as, um, you know, various industries start opening doors again, an inability for us to have a place to have our children be cared for uh, really, really impacts, you know, our ability to, to go back to work. Yeah, I think, and it was concerning to me as well as, you know, the lack of conversation around that, right, of the women, the impact on women, the dual income households um, that we were seeing like touched at every restaurant, but not what are we going to do if 50% of the daycares close or as they're estimating in Massachusetts, potentially only 11% could actually continue if COVID lasts through the summer with no daycare resuming. No, I think it's very, very important to talk because we, we, people are talking about many things like masks and support to healthcare workers, but there are many things that are needed in life. Uh, and, I, you know, I have a, I have young kids and I understand, you know, when you're in meetings and things like that, you need support, like when you're working parents, both of you. So I, I think it's a very important mission that you've taken. What motivated you to do this? Uh, well, I mean, I would say for us, um, the facility and the, the you know the child care, um, you know the organization itself uh, has made a dramatic impact on our family, um, both prior to the pandemic 
taking uh, taking into taking effect, as well as you know during. I, I would say that um, Reed, who's the the director and the the owner of the facility, has gone out of her way uh, to bring a stabilizing presence into our, our children's lives. Um, yeah, she organizes things like Friday night bingos. Mm-hmm. Our kids who are like two and four actually are participating in two hours of Zoom a day, wow. actively yeah. engaged in two hours of Zoom a day. <laughs> That's really <laughs> and asking for that every day. When is it going to be our Zoom time? Because yeah. she puts so much effort into it. And so yeah. for us, you know, it was a big piece of that. But I think even bigger picture for me being a diversity and inclusion practitioner is around, like I'd mentioned, um, the concerns of, of the traditional views falling back on women, um, you know, of, of going back into the office, who's going to have to make continued sacrifices, right, if daycares are not around. Uh, and so I was also concerned from that angle, and then also the beloved community daycare side that Tyler's mentioned. Yeah, because I think it's not only impact right now, it's impact after the life of yes. COVID-19. Yeah. It's kind of continued effect. So, uh, you know, tell me the effort, like, what are you guys doing? Is there a Facebook or how people can help you? What are the things that you guys are doing? So we basically, you know, after having um, our happy hour calls with our other parents that our daycare had organized, because it's a community here, um, we really started to see the financial impact on, on the center Um, as they've given the families the option to not pay. So Mm -hmm. similar to the many restaurants that have started their own GoFundMes, we launched a GoFundMe that supports um, our daycare lasting through COVID-19. Wonderful. Yeah, and I think it's it's somewhat two-pronged to to what we've touched on here. One is for us personally, you know, the immediate little red wagon, the the immediate facility, doing everything we can to kind of keep that open. And we've, we've garnered a lot of support to date. Hopefully we'll continue... Uh, to raise more funds for that. And then a, a very close second to that is obviously raising broader awareness to the topic. It is right. not necessarily immediate top of everyone's minds, yeah. um, but it will have a very long-term and lasting impact um, if these if this industry, you know, it... It's um, fizzled up, it, yeah. It has so much impact. So are you thinking about, you know, you're starting with your local daycare. Are you thinking of big, taking it big? Are you thinking about <laughs> how to, I know it's very difficult to manage anyway, but what can people do to help? Or like, I know you said awareness, could they start this on their own or could they connect with you? How can, because it's a bigger problem. It's not just few communities, right? Yeah, very true. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, for us is, of course, we can be, you know, looked at as a starting place, a sounding board for people who are looking to save their daycare as well. Um, We're always happy to help with that. Uh, But I think the bigger thing is, is our director who's been close with us on other interviews, she's kind of taking um, the lead on on Little Red being a movement, right, of of helping people understand how the PPP loans impacted daycare, right? Mm-hmm. Different than a, a, other small businesses. And so she's now taking this um, further to help people understand the impact. We're trying to inspire people to do things like the GoFundMe or begin having conversations with their daycare families to create this momentum and community support for their own for their own daycare. So, uh, you know, you said Miss Reed, or how can people connect to her? Or what is there a Facebook page or something that people can connect? Yeah, she owns Little Red Wagon Daycare. In Little New Red, Red Little Wagon. Red Wagon Daycare yeah. in in, in, New, in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, so she has a Facebook page that she manages that you can reach that you could reach out to her on there um, to get additional thoughts. Um, you'll obviously have our information. From from this session, so we're happy to talk with other parents as well, trying to start something. How similar. can they reach to you guys, Angela? How how can they reach out to you guys? Um, to Facebook either, or how? Yeah, Facebook or uh, my email is at it's. I can send it to you, or it's Adams A D A M S dot eight three zero at gmail dot com. So Adams dot eight three zero eight three zero at gmail dot com. Yeah. So, so that people can reach out to you or they can find you on Facebook, Angela Spence, and then can yeah. reach out to you through that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, and so it's very amazing to see that you actually started this, of course, you know, trying to help you, but then it's a bigger moment. Uh, and also, I really want to thank you that you're selflessly trying to basically, you know, encourage other uh, parents to do this yeah. and spending your time with, with the kids being there. So, uh, you know, how 
it, it must be challenging. Tell me some of the challenges, like to start such a movement, like GoFundMe or however. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'd say uh, I, obviously, I think um, gaining traction for any movement is going to have its its own unique set of challenges. I would say for us. Um, one of the hardest things about kind of raising awareness about this specific topic is that this industry and these these organizations, they can't provide or, or it's very challenging um, to provide an immediate service. So obviously right. there's there's direct economic impacts to, to pretty much every family, you know, and everybody's worried about jobs and, um, you know, the health of their families and those types of things. So this is kind of sitting in the background. Uh, and I think it's what we've been focused on is trying to, to hit, hammer the point home that there's a longer term play here mm-hmm. um, that, yeah, it's very challenging. You can't, you know, continue to give money and receive the immediate service that you had. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if these facilities close, then, um, you know, it, it, it prohibits or, or significantly detracts from you know, our ability as a society to, to recover and move forward. Yeah. So it's just kind of trying to put a longer term problem in front yeah. of people today. You no, know, I, I think that's a great point because it's not a short term COVID, it's fine, then go ahead. It's the long term effect that yeah. of COVID that is a, that, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, and, and I think too, it's, um, you think about it with, with long, with long term, right? And, and the community effort is every single one of these daycares. Mm-hmm. have to be supported by their own families to you know really be inspired to want to give and you really have to get out there and tell the story of how your daycare is really impacting your community and why others outside of your community that this problem matters to them right whether you're a c-suite leader at an organization yeah this is a real problem if your workers don't have anywhere to send their children to come back and work for you yeah so you have to you have to really personalize the story and the story yeah. is that we need these daycares to survive for yeah. our economies and our businesses to thrive okay so uh you know this is a very selfless act how do you feel uh, starting this movement i know you're involved in feed uh, you know the other stuff as well how do you feel both of you <laughs> well i i can say um uh, my wife is you know she's very passionate and, and very selfless as, as you know in general so she's drives a lot of initiatives feed the fight boston being one i'd say for myself it's been um obviously intrinsically rewarding for for the message to resonate and and you know the awareness to to grow to a broader audience yeah. uh, and a little surprising as well <laughs> uh, i think you know as, as people have heard it there we've received a lot of support uh a lot of endorsement from various you know media channels and and individuals you know that i think understand the issue at hand and are yeah. uh, very supportive of it and yeah we wake up, i wake up every day and i look at the gofundme to say tyler uh, look what you've done you know <laughs> and, I, and i text our director and i say oh, i hope this amazing. is going to make a difference i know it's not fifty thousand dollars that you need <laughs> it's to survive, a great but it's, feeling it's a big chunk right so so how people can donate to your gofundme is there a way is there an uh, address that you can share with us Yes. Yeah, so if you go on, if you just go to the GoFundMe site um, and put in Little Red Wagon, you would be able to find, um, would be able to find our page. So our main goal for the show, as I talk to you, Angela, is try to create awareness and connect to people. So Thank hopefully you. with this show and with your great message, both has been an amazing job that you're doing. People can either donate, they can support your fight with your, with your director, or they can reach out to you and get advice and start in their own community, something like that, because it's widespread. So I hope we, can, you know, we can, uh, you know, spread that message. Thank you uh, thank very you much. much. So Eddie, before we go, any message to the viewers who are watching you? No, just um, you know, thank you for your time. Um, and if you yeah. feel inspired to give and support our community daycare, please do, or reach out to others in your community that have young children in daycares and, and ask how you can support and sustain these small businesses as well. Yes. Oh. And stay safe and well. And, and, and thank strong. You. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I absolutely agree. And thank you so much, Angela and Bo, Tyler. Great job you guys are doing. And we hopefully everybody can get connected. And thank you to the viewers. Please stay safe, stay strong. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.